All right, guys, let's talk about cell terminals and sort of what we have learned and what we are going to be offering and maybe a little bit of a insight, okay, into sort of our thought process. Um, I want to begin with these. These are the official EVE terminals. They have sort of a matte uh, finish. And I believe they're cast aluminum, which is nothing's wrong with cast aluminum. And this is what Eve is is offering as their standard sort of terminal. It will usually come with a uh, sort of a dual bus bar that you put like this. And you have two poles uh, to mount it. And, you know, it, it works. Uh I will get into some issues in a second, but that's sort of Eve's approach. Um, so, so that is Eve's sort of official approach. Initially, we used to be selling these type of cells. Now, what this is, is it is a aluminum base with a steel pressed in stud. And it's very strong. It won't come off. But one of the complaints people had is they don't really like the small contact area. Now, I will tell you, up to under 200 amps, this is perfectly fine. We have done tests. Can't really find any particular issue with them. Um, it's fairly cheap to set up. A lot of people use it. But most people are now associating this thing with grade B. So if they're saying... Hey, if you don't have the official Matt Eve terminal, by the way, if your terminal is not this matte cast or dull finish, it's a shiny one that looks like that. It's not of Eve's official terminal. It's some terminal trying to pretend to be Eve. So just be on the lookout for that. Eve's official terminal is going to be this sort of matte type finish. Okay, and we'll get back to this. All right, so that is what people are saying. Hey, if you have this, it must be grade B. Not true. Eve just didn't offer that in the 304 cells, which is why it's, and they just started. So, which is why this is, you know, sort of that. Then we have these REPT. And I tend to really like this. You have square terminals that REPT has, and you've got decent coverage. This is plenty enough for most bus bars. In fact, we'll put a bus bar on there to show you what kind of coverage it has. So you can see plenty of surface area for the bus bar. Good contact should be more than sufficient for up to the 1C rating. I don't see any reason why you can't pull, you know, 280 or so amps out of this and have no issue. Now, um, some uh, things to be aware. Again, just like the this stud right here it is a steel stud pressed fit into an aluminum base and then laser welded some people are saying hey why isn't there a laser weld here it is not needed two of these surfaces area are more than sufficient in order to keep the stud properly in place and provide all the current you need i do like this because there's no leverage point it's directly on the terminal unfortunately because Eve uses a circular terminal, it's not possible to do that. But the 230 amp hour Eve cells are actually coming with a very similar square design. So there's a chance maybe when version 3 of the LF304 comes out, Eve will also go to this square terminal. I think it's going to make welding a little easier. And for DIYers and stuff that people want to be able to take stuff on and off, this may be the one of the go-to methods for setting up cells. All right, now with that out the way, I'm gonna focus on this and this because that's really where we come into play and what we have sort of diverted by maybe not carrying the stock Eve terminals in the US. We will still have them available in our Hong Kong, from our Hong Kong uh, uh, distribution center, but in the US probably are going to focus on, on our terminals. So again, these are the two terminals that we currently carry. This is something we just had, and now we're gonna focus on just comparing these two terminals 
and sort of give you our thoughts and what we what we think is, is sort of going on. Okay? All right. Let's discuss the SFK terminal versus the EVE terminal. Okay? So first, I just want to go over some aesthetics. Okay? The main difference is obviously one of these is designed for screws to be inserted from the top. The other one is designed for a nut to be attached from the top. So that's primarily the difference. But I want you to sort of look down, and I don't know how well this is going to show up, but if you look down this and then sort of here, you can actually kind of see these terminals aren't even laser welded properly. They still work, but there's a little crooked stuff happening. And again, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but when you physically see it, you can see that one is kind of crooked. It's going slightly in. Okay. Now, our terminals, when we weld them, they're welded using a jig. So they're going to be dead straight. Every single cell is welded on using a jig that properly aligns each one of the terminals. So it goes on perfectly straight. Again, probably not a big deal. If you put the terminals on, they usually show up correctly. So, and you've got enough wiggle room to where even if it's slightly off, it will still work. But it's a little disappointing that they don't use a jig to weld on their terminals. Now, we discussed these terminals. Let's discuss the biggest drawback of these term, uh, this style of terminal. Because we've got a small area where the circle is, the actual mounting area where the terminal is is offset from the terminal which means we have a gap and as you can see our gaps fairly consistent but you know there is a gap and there is sort of a lever point on here where there's potential where if you press down on it it's significant with significant force you can bend this now we do machine our terminals and they're stamped with our insignia but physics is physics, and if you press down on it, it will mess up. Now, let's look at the EVE terminals. And I don't know how well it is, but there's actually already slight bending. And this has been well documented. People have bought stuff from EVE and complained about the same thing, saying, why the heck are these sort of slanted? And unfortunately, that's just the reality of the situation. Um, it's a thicker, taller terminal. And depending on how they mount the foam, it is going to twist and bend a little bit. Again, I don't think it's the end of the world, but that is one, one drawback of having a terminal that is offset versus having a terminal that's dead on center of the pad. But again, since we're dealing with a circular terminal, this is really the only way you can do it. So that's one initial drawback of the differences. The rest of the differences I'm really going to discuss the whole philosophy of using a screw-in type setup versus a bolt-on type setup, okay? So here's our issue with the uh, bolt-on. So the first thing is, if you bolt down this screw and you aren't paying attention, you can easily go all the way down and actually penetrate the cell. So I'm actually gonna get another screw here and show you so we have the screw in and now we're going to slowly do it and here's one of the big problems that we potentially see if you're not careful or you're using the wrong type of grub screw and you start screwing this in you can actually penetrate the cell there's no stop in it and actually we kind of lifted that terminal up a little bit so i'll back up a little bit and you'll see that terminal move See that? That is a big problem. So there's actually no stop in the terminal. And it, they actually did a good job in that it's actually a steel helicoil inside the aluminum. So that gives it much more rigidity. But there's no way to stop it. So if you use the wrong scrub screw, you can penetrate it all the way down and that's one 
you're not going to have a very good contact and two you can run the issue of actually hitting your cell now i know many people are saying well that's highly unlikely no one would do that but trust me on this one people do okay second thing we'll actually put another post on there and kind of show you some other potential issues all right so the second thing is since there's no really way to stop that screw from going down when you're tightening your nuts if you are not careful and you over tighten it you're actually going to start pulling that screw out and then you'll have a bad connection so how do you secure that grub screw so that it doesn't move it stays in place and allows you to tighten the nuts at the top so you can get a nice four to six nano uh, newton meters of, of torque well unfortunately we've learned this the hard way you have to use some sort of thread lock or compound now not everyone's going to use this but anyone that will tell you that's in a mobile environment or environment that has vibration they will use some sort of uh, thread lock here's what happens with thread locker as soon as you put it into these terminals inevitably when you're tightening your grub screw or your nuts some of that thread locker is going to leak out and contaminate the surface and when that happens you have a poor connection to your bus bar so the connection between this and this gets contaminated which means you get bad readings and your bms picks that up it thinks the cell voltage is much lower than it is we have dealt this many many times with the 280ns that had used to have terminals with drilled holes and now we can almost guarantee that this is happening again i know this because if you go to our website and you go to pre-built batteries and you see under the pre-built batteries there's a 260 hp refurb do you know the number one reason why we have refurbished batteries is because initially we were telling people to put loctite in their holes and screwing it in and we weren't super careful about cleaning it up and inevitably one out of every 10 or 12 batteries would have a situation where the loctite would leak onto the terminal it would cause the bms to go crazy and give us a bad reading and the customer would say hey this is defective battery and in their defense it would certainly appear that way so it's something that is we know is going to be a problem with this terminal okay now let's talk about another potential problem as you can see with their bus bars there are two holes so when you put it in here you have to make absolutely sure that you have even torque on this side as well as this side if you don't you can actually have a situation where your bus bar is actually tweaked where it is making contact for this hole but not as strong in this hole and then therefore now you only have this little area for your contact so it is absolutely critical that you have perfect torque on each side of your terminal otherwise the bus bar will not sit flat it will sit like this or it'll sit like this which means one side has good contact the other hole does not so another potential problem and in fact i think um andy from off grid garage experienced this in his live test so it is certainly something to you know be aware of um lastly i understand the appeal it does look cool and it has sufficient area but i think when we did our terminal we wanted a slightly different so let's talk about what we have going on with sort of our terminal okay now here it is a much more traditional setup you've got large meaty continuous aluminum area for your bus bar it sits in here you tighten it down with a lock nut and it is not going to go anywhere so we'll show you that process in just a second all right so we got two nylon lock nuts
that is on there, it is not going anywhere. You won't have to worry about it getting stripped. You do not need to use Loctite. This is a nylon inserted steel bolt. It will handle vibrations extremely well. We have a large surface and it is going to provide you 300 amp continuous up to 500 amp burst. So you have a very easy traditional setup that you can use and it is going to provide you with extreme rigidity and extremely well contact as it's a single contact point. Now, how are these constructed? You have a hex bolt that is press fitted into the base of aluminum, machine smooth for the bottom, and it is literally impossible to have this come loose. You're going to break the stud before you rip it out. We've tested it numerous times. It works fantastic. Okay. So that's a little bit about our approach on what we're going to be carrying in the U.S. We just feel, based on our experience, there are a lot of issues that can arise with this terminal. I am not saying that it can't be used anywhere. I believe in a stationary environment, it is fine. We will carry this terminal, but it's only going to be available if you order it from our Hong Kong warehouse and we ship it to you directly. Now, despite this, that this is our terminal, if I had to pick one terminal from all of them, I would still pick this one. The reason for that is it is simple, there's no leverage issue, and it provides ample area for conductivity. But because of the circular terminal, we simply can't attach it that way. Therefore, in our opinion, for high amp loads, and you can see a video where we push 250 amps, this is probably going to be our preferred method and probably what we're gonna be carrying for the LF280K version three, as well as the LF150V2. By the way, this is the V2, and we've changed the label a bit. You will now clearly see the amp hour, watt hour rating, and you have two QR codes. This, if you wanna see our report on the website, but if you just want to get this serial number and read off this, just take a scan of this, and it'll give you the serial number because sometimes it's hard to read the QR code here. So now you can just read it off here. Okay. So a little longer video than anticipated, but I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what we've been doing with the, uh, with the different terminals that are out on the market and sort of the approach that we're taking. Um, I'm sure there's some people who are going to have concerns like, no, this is not, we don't really like this or we don't really like that. But, um, you know, options are available. And if you prefer the Eve standard, more than happy to service your needs but within the usa we're probably going to stick with our terminal only because it doesn't seem to have some of the issues that we see uh with the eve terminals okay all right well thank you everyone and uh again thanks for choosing sun fun kids take care